we want to welcome you to the TMA Radio Broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Ackridge, and we are just about to get started. And we thank and praise God for all of you that tune in every week to listen in, whether it's by way of telephone, way of radio. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We have many different things going on here on the TMA Radio Broadcast. We have a new hot show, Be Free from the Inside Out. Evangelist Antoinette McCormick Mondays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time And on Wednesday we have Men to Men Talk Back The Talk Up Show At 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time With your host Pastor Ackridge And co-host Pastor Carl Young Talking about the things in society And we are telling you the truth and you're getting it all here on the best gospel, the best praise talk show in America, the TMA Radio Broadcast. And if you want to become a sponsor, you can do so. Simply reach out to us by emailing Pastor Ackridge 2016 at gmail.com. That's Pastor Ackridge 2016 at gmail.com. Amen. We have Third Sunday Hour Power here on this broadcast. Every third Sunday, we have a different speaker to share a message from the Lord. Amen. Here, brought to you by the Timmy Radio Broadcast and the Circle of Love Prayer Partners Evangelist Linda Ellis. We give God the glory for this broadcast, and we pray that something said or something heard will bless you in a mighty way. God bless you and continue to listen to this broadcast. Every week, Break Sunday every through Thursday. Day. God bless you and enjoy. There is power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. And amen. Good evening. Good evening. That's the intro. I made that intro about a week ago. I'm learning how to make intros and I'm learning how to put that music together. I'm going to get better at it because I got so much to try to do to edit and all that. But we thank God for another episode of Men to Men Talk Back, the talk up show. We broadcast each and every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We welcome each and every one to join us. And at the end of the show, at the end of the conversation tonight, we ask all our callers to share their input, their thoughts, or whatever they like to say at the end of our conversation. We will give you time at the end of the broadcast just to share, amen, with our listeners uh, what you feel about the conversation on tonight. We thank God for you again. We give him the glory and the honor and the praise for this radio broadcast 
Amen. Amen. God bless you, man of God. Our co-host, amen, as always on the show every Wednesday. My 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 ride or die brother, amen. Pastor Carl Young. Amen. Pastor Carl Young, welcome my brother back on here as co-host. Amen. I'll let you go ahead on and talk to the listeners uh before we get started. Amen, amen. God bless everybody on the line tonight, amen. And all the radio listeners. Man, it's a pleasure to be back on the line tonight, amen, and just seeing what God is going to do tonight, amen. Amen, amen. I know he's going to do a marvelous thing in, in this city, in these airways, in people's homes, wherever they are around this world. We just believe in God going to do everything that we, we expect. We know he's going to do it. We know he's going to take care of us. We know that things going to be turned around, and at his time, and things going to be great for us, as we already know, we, we don't worry about what's going on in society. We talk about what's going on in society, but we ain't scared. We ain't worried. We ain't trembling. We ain't hiding. Amen. And we sure ain't going to stop talking about the goodness of the Lord. And we's not going to stop being on our assignment. So many has, but these two brothers right here will not. Amen. Before we start, Pastor, Amen. if you will go ahead on and break us break us uh, to, to the prayer. Amen. Before we uh, get started on these airways tonight, sir. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus now, Lord God, be. Father God, ask for forgiveness of anything that we've done, Lord God, that was not pleasing to you in Jesus' name, Lord God. And now, Father God, we ask that you anoint myself and Pastor Nino, Lord God. Father God, you anoint these airways, Lord God. Father God, you anoint the people on the line and the listeners, Lord God. And Father God, let us decrease so that dying may be increased, Lord God. Father God, let us, Father God, represent you, Lord God, and let us bring you the glory tonight, Father God, because you are worthy. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Amen, everybody. We thank God tonight. Awesome night tonight. Tonight, our topic on Men to Men Talk Back, the talk up show is purpose. Amen. The question been raised, and uh, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. Do you know what your assignment is from God and that goes to if you don't know what your purpose is then you sure don't know what your assignment is and so tonight's topic is purpose do you know what your assignment is from God and, and you know all of us got different assignments Pastor Carl has an assignment I have an assignment uh, other preachers and evangelists and prophets has uh, their assignment Amen. But at the end of the day, all of us have the same assignment of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to all the nation. Amen. But, you know, we got to realize that we're in a time where people don't even know what their purpose is. Then they, there are so many because they don't know what their purpose is, Pastor. They are out of their assignment. Matter of fact, they don't even know their assignment because they're doing the wrong thing. You know, there's so many people. Uh, that might be called to be an usher, but they doing something else, and they out of their they out of their assignment because one they don't know they don't know their purpose, and I just wanted to start off with the reading from the book of Genesis, the first chapter, verse twenty seven. It says here in the King James version, so God created man in His own image, in the image of God created He him, male and female created He them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the fowls of the air, and over every living uh, thing that moveth upon the earth. And that's uh, some of our purpose is that we do what? Be uh, fruitful, amen, and multiply. And that's at the beginning, amen, of, of, of man creation. And we as, as leaders, you know, we have to really understand what our purpose is and what our assignment is. And only how I can understand what my assignment is for God's will is to have in a relationship with him first. Then I have to walk with God. Then I have to commune with him. Then I have to, you know, take time to understand and hear his voice. And and that's where he will give you the assignment. He will give you purpose. And uh, I didn't know that at the beginning of my, tr my travels. 
And I'm still traveling. I'm still journeying on. But I just remember when I first uh, what came into ministry. And before I even came to ministry, y'all, I, I tell you what, I done, I done lived my life uh, uh, to the fullest. It was whatever go, I was down for it. But God just spoke to me in the wee hours of the morning. Amen. And he talked to me. It's so precise. It's like I can almost look and see through the mood, like, like being at the movies. You know, what God was speaking to me, it was so clear. And that's one thing about God. When you hear his voice, it's clear. It's, it's not nothing but clearness when you when you hear from God and 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 that that moment in my when I'm sleeping in my bed and that 2 and 3 o'clock time in the morning when God came to me he showed me what I needed to do and he showed me what he wanted me to do and he gave me books of the Bible and and specific passages I'm talking about that these are passages that like down from the chapter and verse and I'm thinking about, you know, waking up in the middle of the night when he spoke to me and wrote it down. Uh, that's when I knew, you know, that God had something uh, for me to do in, in this life, in this walk. And, and, and every day that I grew, every day that I continued, he continued to reveal different things to me. And one thing he revealed, pastor and listeners, was that the men and women of God had wavered from the truth of God. They 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 have had deviated from Amen. what God wanted the, the people to, to, to be led by. In, in other words, you see where we are now today, and you see how out of order it's gotten. It just didn't start yesterday. It didn't start five years ago. It was started maybe 20 years ago. Amen. It started way back. And then men, they, men and women stopped preaching the gospel, and they stopped telling people that they're is a hell and and and, and people that, that don't feel good to hear that because a lot of times people just want to preach um a lot i heard a lot of people just don't you know basically don't want to preach in the old testament you know they don't want to even discuss things in the old testament because that was some things that was in the old testament god didn't play around with them <laughs> in the old testament pastor and and so god showed me that he needed me to preach what he tells me to preach, regardless of who like it and who don't like it, to be on fire because the fire was put out of the people that were supposed to be teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus. They, the fire and gone. Amen. So I'm just starting that off because in order for me to hear my hear God, I had to I had to be in a relationship with him. And then uh, he had to tell me what my purpose is. And I saw it as clear as a vision. Like, like you can look at your 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 uh, smart TV. You know how clear that is, 180, 180 uh, just clears a bell. Well, when you in your sleep and, and God is speaking to your spirit, that's how clear you looking through like glasses. You know, when you, uh, some of us can't hardly see those letters on the book. And when we put glasses on or reading glasses on, those things become so big. You're like, woo, I can see now. I can read. That's how it is when God show you what he wants you to do. But you have to be in relationship with them. Amen. You have to, uh, and I'm going to talk about that some more about being submissive and all of that. But I'm going to let Pastor get in on it. Amen. 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 That, that was that was awesome, Pastor. Um, I want to reference uh, my comments um, coming from Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Mm. See, mm. I ask so many people, you know, what what is your purpose? Uh -huh. What is your purpose in life? And we are talking about people in the church. Mm. Amen. And some of them say, well, you know, I think it's this or I think it's that. You know, or some people just don't care, Pastor. They just happy just going to church. Uh -huh. You know, I'm in church. That's good enough for me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening to the word. I'm saying Amen. That's, that's good enough for me, mm. you know. But my question is, how can you be an effective witness for Christ if you don't know what he calls you to do? Amen. See, yes, we are called to do the work of an evangelist, but what specific instructions or specific purpose has God called you to do? Right. Okay, because if you don't know that, you'll probably do stuff that, you know, you're not anointed to do. Amen. Amen. You you will do stuff. You start doing stuff based on how you feel. Mm. You start doing stuff based on how you feel. 
the Bible says in First Corinthians twelve and twelve, for as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of the body of that one body being many or one body, so also is Christ. See, we're supposed to work together. See, we are supposed to work together just like the body. Amen. But here's the problem with what's happening, uh, Pastor, because some people don't know what their purpose is in the body. What they do is they cause the body to limp. Mm. See, they slow progress because, see, we are counting on you to do your part. Amen. So the strong carry the infirmity of the weak. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that the strong get tired too, Pastor. Mm -hmm. So now, because you're supposed to be helping me out, uh, cutting the grass, you know what I'm saying, and keeping the lawn, you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. You want to stay inside and be the, and be a bathroom monitor, or you want to um, pass out um, programs. Mm -hmm. But you're supposed to be in the yard with me, helping keep the church clean, helping me cut the grass. But you don't want to do that, Pastor. Right. You don't want to do that. See, we got too many slackers, too. In the body of Christ. Right. Can I just be real? Go See, ahead. People don't want, they don't want a job that's not prestigious to them. See, they want a job, Pastor, that gives them the most look. See, they want to be the praise and worship leader. See, they want a position where they can sit in the pool pit. You see what I'm saying? They want to play the keyboards. You know, see, they want to do all these other things that probably are not their purpose. Because if you don't know your purpose and you're doing something, then you're out of order. Right. Then you're out of order, Pastor. So many people are operating in the era of the purpose, and, and they wonder why things are going wrong for them. Mm -hmm. See, when you're in the wrong purpose, Pastor, and you're not and you're not doing what God calls you to do, guess what? There ain't no anointing on it. Amen. So when you don't know your purpose, you don't know what God calls you to do, you are operating in the flesh. And guess what happens when you operate in the flesh, Pastor? Uh -huh. That means you start doing things that is not of God. That's right. You start doing things that are not of God, Pastor, because you're doing stuff that are not anointed. So when you're doing a job that's not anointed, you're liable to say and do anything. Right. And that's the problem with the body of Christ because we got people in the pulpit who are not supposed to be pastors and preaching. You see what I'm saying, Pastor? So it's easy for them to steal the money. Uh -huh. It's easy for them to speak with people. It's easy for them to preach the word and go in the parking lot and cut somebody out because you're not anointed to do that. Mm -hmm. Because you're not anointed to do that, amen, God's graces and mercy are not on you in that area. Right. They're not on you. See, Pastor, we're just doing stuff because it looks good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I look good when I'm standing up here being uh -huh. the deacon. I, I look good when I'm the armor bearer. I, I, I got my nice suit on. I'm with the pastor. You know what I'm saying? Where he go, I go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you know you ain't supposed to be no armor bearer because you know you still smoke weed. Right. You know you still sleeping with a woman that ain't your wife, so you armor bear and you bring it out all around the pastor. Uh -huh. See, this is the thing that happens, pastor, <laughs> when you're not operating in the area or the, or, the, or the purpose that God called you to be in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We do stuff that look good. Or, here's the thing, pastor, watch this. See, we will do things for the wrong reasons, but guess what? We expect good results. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing something uh -huh. wrong, but right. we still want the good results. We right. still think you're going to breathe on it. Right. No. So you've been saying, I've been, I've, been, I've been the deacon all these years, and it don't feel like nothing ever don't happen for me. You know why? Because you're not in your proper place. Uh -huh. You're doing something wrong, but you want good results. Right. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's all it. you got to do is ask King, King Saul. That's it. God told him to kill everything and don't bring nothing back. Yes. Yeah, but it. guess what? He said, "No, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the um the the fat of the of the spoils and I'm gonna sacrifice it to God." So he thought he was doing something good. Right. I'm gonna bring all the lambs back, even though God told me to kill everybody, and I'm gonna bring the king back and I'm gonna sacrifice it to God. You was disobedient. God didn't tell you to do that. Right. So you thought you was doing something good, but in essence, you were being disobedient, Pastor. Uh -huh. You're being disobedient. Right. See, sometimes, Pastor, we want a position or a title that doesn't have a lot of commitment. Mm. See, we don't want a job with a lot of commitment, mm. but we want a job with a lot of authority. Right, right. That's That's what do. I, I don't want nobody telling me what to do. I want to tell people what to do, uh -huh. Pastor. You know what I'm saying? I want people to reverence me. When I walk in, I want to say, oh, there goes such and such. But get out of self 
and get into purpose. Mm -hmm. Get out of self and get into purpose tonight. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. See, we, when we pick our own calling and not what God called us to do, in essence, what we're doing is we're rebelling against God. Mm -hmm. You know God told you to, uh, to be um, to work maintenance in the church. You know God told you that, but you don't want to do that because it's not prestigious. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. So you say, I'm a minister. You want to be a minister. You know what I'm saying? But you can't lead nobody. You ain't never led nobody to Christ. Right. You can't preach to nobody. Nobody don't receive you. Right. You know why people don't receive you? Because you're not anointed. Now, yeah, you can tell people about the goodness of Christ. And yeah, you can tell them how good he is. But being a minister and leading somebody to Christ is two different things, Pastor. Mm -hmm. It's two different things. That's why so many people get stuck in an area and they can't move forward to the next level because you are in a position that you don't belong in. Hallelujah. That's You're in a position that you don't belong to mm. and you don't belong in. Amen. Now. I'm going to say this and I'm going to turn it back over to you. The verse says all things work together for the good. Amen. But it has to be according to his purpose, mm -hmm. not yours. Right. Stop doing what you want and how and doing it how you feel. Quit pleasing your flesh. Right. You know what I'm saying? Is what you're doing according to God's purpose for your life, or is it according to your purpose on your life? Mm -hmm. I want y'all all to clearly understand this tonight. The anointing supports your purpose. So when God uh, anoints you in a position, he will give you the anointing, Pastor, right. to help you get through that or to help you uh, operate in that position. So when you get in a position that God hasn't ordained you to be in, there's not going to be no anointing, Pastor. Right. That's why we got so many people who are not effective in ministry, Pastor. And what happens, they start doing what feels good. And what happens, it causes the body of Christ to limp. That's it. It causes the body of Christ to limp, Pastor. So that's why we got so many bad churches and so many, because people are in positions that they're not ordained. Because one thing, as me and you know, Pastor, and we've seen with our own eyes. Mm -hmm. If you are a pastor and you do not have a heart for people, you do not love people, you do not have a patience for people, you give up on people, or you talk about people and you think that they don't meet your expectations, you don't want to be around people who you think are not as good as you, you are not a pastor. That's it. You are not a pastor. Amen, pastor? That's it, pastor. You know, because, and I'm going to just pick it off, pick it back off of that. You know, so many people want us to be like them, want us to preach like them, to talk like them, to, you know, all of us are different. All of us, you know, you and I can can, can give the same message, but I may relay it different than you. It don't mean that, you know, and so don't mean that I want you to be like me and not be like you. We're giving the same message, but our method may be different. And a lot of people feel like just because our method is different, that we ain't no better. We, 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 we beneath them. And, and and that's and that's being out of the purpose too. Because if anything, a preacher, a pastor, if you're a pastor, you're supposed to uplift your brother. You don't supposed to tear your brother down just because I, I might not I might not hoop and holler like somebody else. I might not wind up wind up like a like I'm going to pitch a baseball like some of them. You know, some of them they you know, some people all they want to hear is the it's the hmm mm, yeah. They all they want to hear is that wind up. They ain't heard nothing but the wind up. And so I don't get caught up in the wind up. I just I I'm caught up when the spirit gives me uh, and I feel good and I know that he's talking, he's using me. You know, I don't I don't look for the wind up because the wind up the, the devil might be in the wind up. I don't want to listen to wind up. Some people people right. feel like you if you don't ho hoop and holler, you ain't preaching. You know, and that, that that's crazy. And so, uh, going back to purpose, you know, pastor, so many people, even down to the choir members, are out of purpose. Some of them don't even know their purpose. Some of them, they, they know they can't sing. And and, and and I hear people say, when the Lord say, let everything that has bread praise the Lord. Yeah, that, that is true. But but at the same time, God gives you a talent to, to sing. He sing. He give us different talents. Some sing, some don't. And, 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 you know, some people get up there and they want to sing. And they and they and they sound like a train track, and they you know the people uh, are now are looking at them like Lord, I want them to sit down, but you now now you can't minister to them because they want you to sit down because you hurt their ears. So so you out of place, they out of place. But then you got some pastor, amen, that they that that don't have no purpose, don't have no no assignment, and, and they singing, but they ain't singing with no anointing. 
You know, there are some people now. There are some uh, people uh. they got a talent to sing, but there are some people got the anointing to sing. See, the talent to sing are let people get up and smile, and they, you know, ain't nobody getting no breakthrough. But the one that's anointed to sing, boy, that person gonna break some strongholds. That person gonna loosen up some shackles. Right. Amen. That person that sing, you gonna feel the anointing, feel the house. Amen. Because they singing on and they doing it by what their purpose and their assignment. Amen. And they're following God and they're, and, and they're doing God's will. Amen. These people are, can sing and, and you feel the presence of the Lord. But there's some people, they, they, they got some gifts. You know, they give because, look, Satan got gifts too. <laughs> Satan gives gifts. He, he gives gifts. And, and so many people that we see, so many preachers that we see out here, so many television evangelists and preachers that we see robbing folks and stealing folks, you know, they they got, they got a gift from Satan because ain't no way in the world that you should be, uh, uh, I should say, you know what, I'm going to send you this anointed rock from Jerusalem and, and it's going to bless you. It's going to touch, I mean, you know, that's a lie. <laughs> And they, you know, you know, you know, somebody they got this rock from the holy city and, and, and all of this stuff, man. You know what? Some of it's just a trick from the enemy. And, and they got to do these tricks because they don't have no nothing to do nothing else. That's why they do these things. Because they don't have no nothing. They just have, they like the musicians uh, back in uh, the Pharaoh day. You know, the, the the musicians had 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 a gift, but it wasn't a godly gift because they used it for wickedness. And therefore, th what they did was not po more powerful than what God allowed Moses to do with his gift. Because God an anointed Moses, and therefore Moses, what he did, his acts, was, was more better than the musicians. Because they couldn't they couldn't articulate what Moses was doing. They, they, they couldn't articulate. So they had to know that this man was with God. Amen. So he, you know, Moses was walking in his purpose. He 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 had he 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 first, you know, he like some of us, we get hard headed, you know, God done called us, but we we shy back, we don't want to do it. And just like Moses, he came up with the excuse, I can't talk, I got a speech impediment, uh, people are gonna look at me, they're not gonna understand what I'm saying. I, I don't know. But God said, just go ahead on trust me. And, and so Moses was like, okay, well let me, uh, while he when he said okay. When he when he decided to say, you know what, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do God's will. Then 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 that anointing fell on Moses, and he was able to go and, and speak. Amen. Even his his life was at stake. He went and did what God wanted him to do, and God watched over the, over him while he led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Amen. When you got anointing, you can do that. Amen. You know when you anointing when you when God give you the anointing, and when God give you favor in your life because you are obedient, because you have that commitment, He gonna open up doors that you didn't think was gonna open up. You know, I look at all the doors that God continue to open up, man. I'm, it's blowing my mind. You know why? And, and I thank God for it. Hey, Amen. I thank God for it. But if I was uh, any other way, you think God be doing these things for me and my family? No, he will not. No, he will not do it. Hey, Amen. He would not do it. Now, the thing about it, and, and, and just like Pastor was saying, uh, Pastor, you, you know, we talk about being out of out of position. You got people that 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 that, that really should should uh, be was called to 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 take care of the maintenance of the church or, or to keep the bathrooms and the and the carpet clean and and, and the roof uh, uh, everything that, that the structure well. But they don't want to do that because they want the title of deacon. They don't want the title of anything else. And there are some deacons that that are not in their purpose. Because they they got some that are gripe, griping, some that are, are shacking up, some that are continue to drink beers and, and liquor and stuff, continue to cuss. And you, how you gonna be a, you know, uh, how you gonna be a deacon and you still cussing? You still using foul language? You still have bitterness in your heart? You still, uh, 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 uh you know, you you out of you out of place? You out of place? And and and, and a lot of people, uh that are in ministry, a lot of them out of place. And and, and that's why they can't be effective because they're, not, they're out of place. You know, God God gives us different different uh, gifts. He gives us uh, different different uh, assignments. And, and you know, we he, we have multiple assignments. We just don't have one assignment. There's different assignments. I remember coming out of uh, the, my old church because God gave me an assignment. He gave me an assignment to get out of tradition. The, the, the same tradition that's stunting the growth of ministry today. God is not, he don't the only tradition that we should carry in in this walk is is to teach generations about Jesus Christ. That's the only tradition. But all this stuff because great grandma did and did and all this and you don't know why you're doing it and you can't back it up with scripture and you you sitting around here doing it. 
It's tradition. And then you want to know, people want to know why they can't grow. Why people stay for a little bit. Because a lot of places where, they, where people are all out of position, amen, and they go back to the leader too. Because see, the leader is supposed to know, uh, uh, you know, is this person fit for the position or not? You know, not just voting in because you need somebody to fill a spot, but but know that person. Okay, I see the gifts in him, and I think it's oh, I think it should be over here instead of over there. Amen. The leader that is the, the the anointing will show that leader that your your gift. He will he will show that the spirit of God will show that 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 mother right there. You know, maybe she don't need to be on the kitchen committee. She need to be a prayer warrior. You know, she she's a she need to be one of the wailing women. Amen. Then you know when you put her in your her place, all oh, man the things begin to click like a puzzle. Amen. Because you know what, when you when you to putting a puzzle together and you got all types of shapes and stuff, and you just can't slam anything together in a puzzle. Everything got to fit to a T. Amen. So that's how it is with ministry and, and knowing your purpose in this walk, this journey that we're doing. You got to know your purpose and your assignment. Amen. You have to know that. And that, there's a lot of people, uh, even even now, if not in ministry, they don't even have a clue what they're supposed to be doing in this life. And, and you know, and, mm. and, and the basic thing is they don't have a relationship with God. They don't have a relationship with God because God gives us instructions. The spirit guides us and leads us. And if you ain't connected, how you ain't gonna be guided and led? You you don't you just gonna be a, a body in a in a place, just t consuming air. And, and a lot of people, you know, because you can find that you, we talk to uh, many different people, not just you know ch people in church. We talk to people out in the streets in the world. And a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't really know what I need to be doing in this life. And so many people get get upset. They get, I mean, when you know what, let me let me back up. When you know what your purpose is. You ain't gonna get up so upset with life, and, and, and the people that get so much upset with life, the people that get angry with life, the people that that seem like every day they got an issue, every day they got a problem, every month, every year, five years done gone by, they still at the same spot. But this is because they don't have a relationship, they don't know the purpose because they don't have relationship with God. If they would have relationship with God, they will now begin to see what their purpose and their will is for God. Because when you know what your what, what the what, when you know what your purpose is, you, you know, life is a lot better. You know, we ain't angry every day. Pastor, I know you ain't angry every day. You know, we got some days, <clears throat> amen. We got some days that we you know we'll have some ups and downs, but but you ain't walking around with your lip poked out every day of the week. And maybe, you know, it's seven days in a in a week. And and, and, and one day of the week you might have a little something you're going through but they don't stop you. You they don't they don't they don't weigh you down so much that you want to give up. Because you got six other days that you feeling great. Amen. But but you know, there's people out here that, that you know they have more upset days and they, they hate the world and they can't stand even even being in the in the town or they don't even want to be in the town. They don't want to be around people. One one day they want to be around people, the next day they can't stand nobody because they don't know their purpose. They don't have a relationship, they don't have a connection. And and, and, and basically they hadn't you know, made that commitment to God to say, I'll follow you anywhere you need me to go. And that's it. Go ahead, Pastor. Hey Amen, Pastor. That that was true. And yeah. everything that you said was true, sir. You know, just making sure we stay in our purpose. Because when you're in your purpose, there are blessings in your purpose. Amen. See, you gotta you gotta understand when you when you in your purpose, your purpose comes along with blessings. That's Amen. It. Why would God anoint you to do something but then never reward you for, mm. for being obedient? Mm -hmm. We don't serve a God like that. Mm -hmm. When you walk in your purpose, you you preaching the true word, you saying what God wants you to say. He's gonna reward you, That's it. but also when you don't, when you do something and you're not, and, and you're not uh, operating in your purpose, this is gonna sum it up for us right here. Amen. Acts, Acts nineteen, starting at verse twelve. Then a certain vagabond Jews, exorcist, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirit in the name of Lord Jesus, saying, "We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached." Acts 19 and 13. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, a chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Hold on, you ain't anointed to tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. 
You are not anointed to deal with no demons. You are not anointed to lay hands. So what are you going? What happens? Mm-hmm. Okay. And the man who the evil spirit was leaped on them and mm-hmm. overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. <laughs> right. See, this is what's happening now, Pastor, in uh-huh. the church. Uh-huh. People are becoming naked and wounded, which means you are being exposed. Right. See, this is what happens when you try to operate in a calling that you're not called to do. Uh-huh, Amen. Uh-huh. The devil know who's called and who ain't called. Mm-hmm. The devil know who's a prayer warrior and who ain't a prayer warrior. The devil know who got the anointing to pray for people. Yeah, so as soon as the evil me. spirit seen him, he said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? Who yeah. are you trying to get me out of this person? Uh-huh. When you just you just got finished smoking a joint before you came in here. Now you just, So what happened? The evil spirit jumped on them and they ran down the street naked, Pastor, meaning that they were exposed. Uh-huh. See, this is what happens when you try to operate. Sooner or later, Pastor, you're going to get exposed. Mm-hmm. Especially when you get around anointed people, they gonna know you when you uh, that you're not supposed to be operating in there. Right. Like I always say, don't be a fig trying to operate in an op- apple's office. <laughs> okay, your fruit is a fig, but you're trying to operate in an apple's office, and mm-hmm. sooner or later, Pastor, people are gonna see that. That's right. That's why you got all these apostles and all these bishops and and all these people. They operate in offices they're not supposed to be in. Mm-hmm. You know why, Pastor? Because what they do is they know they're a fig, but they put an apple's outfit on. Mm-hmm. So they dress the part. Right. See, I'm going to dress the part like I look like I'm a pastor. I dress the part like I'm blessed. Mm-hmm. But then when you start operating in it, how you deal with people. See, the biggest thing is once you start dealing with people when you're in that office. When you're in that office and you, or you are required to operate in it, pastor, that's when people are going to see who you really are. Mm-hmm. Amen. It's like the mechanic. You get hired to work on diesel engines, but you know you don't, you don't know nothing about engines like that. You know, you used to just change, put gas in there and change spark plugs, but now you're required to work on a diesel engine. Sooner or later, the real diesel mechanic is going to say, this dude don't know what he's doing. Right, right, this dude going to do it. It's the same right. thing in the body of Christ, Pastor. Uh-huh. Sooner or later, people are going to see that you're not supposed to be in that office. Right. Amen? But watch this, Pastor. This is, this is, this is one reason why people really don't want to work in their purpose, too. Because, see, sometimes your purpose requires a lot. Mm-hmm. See, sometimes your purpose really requires a lot. So we're going to look at, um, let me find it here, we're going to look at Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. Amen. See, here's the thing. God said, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. Mm-hmm. And so he will let my people go, Right. So God said he's going to harden Pharaoh's heart. And we know that if God probably didn't harden Pharaoh's heart, Pastor, that he probably would have let his people go sooner. But God said, no, i got to get the glory out of it. Right. So guess what, Pastor? Pharaoh's purpose was to get so God can get the glory. Right, right. See you know what I'm saying? So God said, I'm going to harden his heart so I can get the glory. Uh-huh. So Pharaoh's purpose but so God can get the glory out of him. Mm-hmm. Now, how many people ready to do that right. so God can get the glory out of you like that? Right. But the key thing that the Lord gave me, Pastor, is when Jesus came and raised Lazarus. Uh-huh. Lazarus literally had to die mm-hmm. so Jesus could get the glory, so yeah. God could be glorified. Because what did Jesus say? I do this not for myself because they standing around and I want them to see your power. I'm paraphrasing, but you know what happened. Yeah. He raised Lazarus out the tomb. Yeah, it was stinking. How yes, many sir. of us are ready to get raised out the tomb? Mm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> how many of us are ready to go through something, Pastor, so we can tell somebody else how to get set free? Uh-huh. How many of us are ready to die and get raised up so we can tell other people how yes, to die sir. and go raise ahead, up? Go ahead, see, now. We think this thing is, oh, we want the cheap stuff, Pastor. Uh-huh. But, see, we ain't ready to get healed from cancer. Right. Ask my mom. Ask my mom. Ask several people you know who had cancer had to go through all this treatment. Now they got to tell people that God is good. Yes, God sir. can heal you. Yes. But see, we don't want to go through that trial. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be like Rogers. We don't want to die for God's glory. We want the easy one. We want to sit in the front row of the church. Uh-huh. We want the pastor to acknowledge us when we come in the church. Every or they go, Pastor, such and such. We want acknowledgement. But we don't want to die for Christ. Mm. We don't want to die for Christ, Pastor. 
Mm. We, don't, we, want, we want the easy God, right? Yeah. We don't really want to bring God to glory. Right. Amen? Yes, we do yes. not want to bring God to glory because we know we hide in God. But the ultimate purpose came through Jesus. Yeah. John 6 and 38. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him that sent me. Uh-huh. So we see that Jesus came down from heaven. Mm-hmm. I want people to understand that tonight. I, I, it's going to be hard for me when I get up there for me to come back down. But I'm just going to be honest with you. I ain't there yet. Uh-huh. I ain't there yet, Pastor. When I get to heaven, I ain't there. Okay? So not even that, but he came down for purpose. He came down to die on the cross yes. so that we may have a chance at everlasting life. Yes, sir. That is serious purpose. Yes. So you mean to tell me he took those stripes for us? He took those beatings for us? He got all kind of names and spit on and abused and lied on. Mm. But guess what, Pastor? We can't even go change the trash in the trash can. Yes, oh, my sir. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pastor, right. We don't even want to change the trash, do trash can, Pastor. We, we don't even want to get up to uh, the jelly beans, one of the little babies, and, and put on the floor. We don't even want to do that, Pastor. Right. But, we want, but we want to say we, we of God and we want to give God the glory. Uh-huh. But we can't even do the little things like that. Right. So you already know you're out of purpose. When you can't <laughs> right. do the little things that God calls you to do, mm-hmm. why should he give you a big thing to do? Right. Amen. When Jesus came down and went to the cross, that was his purpose, to save us. Mm-hmm. But we got problems operating in our purpose when it doesn't uh require when it requires more than what we ready to give mm. amen pastor man you talking good pastor and i was sitting here thinking all of the millionaire preachers we know i ain't gonna start naming names i wonder would any one of them mop a bathroom clean a commode out at the church would they you know go to somebody's house and help them uh, sweep around the yard, or uh, 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 you know, because you know nothing should be beneath us when we when we really know when we really have purpose. You know, we can go to the the widow's house and clean up the yard and move brush. You know, that ain't but that ain't that shouldn't be uh, uh you know beneath me to go and help uh, put my hand to to get dirty. But there are some people. They said, no, nah, I ain't going to do that, man. No, nah, you can do that. And, and, and that, like you said, so many people want the title, but they have no commitment. And then, you know, you see so many people, everybody want to be on, on the, uh, what's the other, not the deacon, it's the other one. Uh, they want to be, um, uh, what do they call this other group of men? Oh, man, I can't even think. But they, there are other men that are normally supposed to keep the grounds, the building structure of the church. Uh, you know, um, they similar to what deacons do, but they don't have the responsibilities and, and, and all of them, but, but they, when, mm-hmm. when, when, when it's time to cut the, the cemetery, you can't get a one of them to cut, bring their more down to cut the cemetery, but they want to be in the title, mm-hmm. you know, that, 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 that's just being in the, they just being in a title with, with no purpose because, you know, if something need to be done. Hey, I ain't got to wait for somebody to do it. They was, I mean, so many people say, well, why you ain't call me and let me do it? Cause I can do it. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not no king, and then like I'm not, I'm not, my, I'm not up here where I, I'm. I, this is too good for me to do. I've heard, I people told me that pastors. They said, man, you why you ain't call me? I would have did it. No, I, I could have did it. I did it. You know, hey, that that one beneath me to do it. You know, it ain't beneath me to go to clean the toilet, clean, you know, mop and clean the bathroom, move chairs, hand out water, uh, serve plates. They ain't, but look, they ain't beneath me. That ain't beneath me. Amen. So you know, so many people though, they they don't want they don't want to do it. They say, uh, that ain't my job. <laughs> they said, ain't my job. Uh huh. That's the first thing they don't say. But they but they 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 in the position to do the job. But they said, no, that ain't my job. Let call brother Bill. He he'll do it. <laughs> he'll do anything you ask. See, they'll use the one that that they're really walking in the purpose. They'll use him. That and that that you got to watch that too, Pastor. Because there's so many people that say, well, call call Pastor. I know he'll do it. You know, I, I know my own pastor won't do it. I know Pastor Carl, he'll give me some money to pay my bill. I know my own pastor, my own trip, but I know... See, people use you too. <laughs> when you're walking in your purpose, they'll use you. 
Cause they say, uh, I know Deacon Bill. Deacon Bill, you can always call on him. Cause Deacon Bill is walking in his his anointing. He's walking in his purpose. He he's walking in his assignment. So yes, that's why he do these things. Because he and everything, you know, when you walk, when you're in your purpose and you are in your right the right assignment from uh, from God. Everything smooth like a Cadillac riding down I-95 on cruise control at 85 miles per hour. You don't feel a bump in the road. That's how it, it would go. But when you out of purpose, everything is what? At an uproar. Everybody upset with one another. And see, that I said that on the last, on a broadcast, maybe a, a few years ago, Pastor, that, you know, the leader should understand how to put the right people together. And the reason I, you see so many organizations or auxiliaries in the church and organizations within the church, they fall and they and they seem like they just can't go nowhere because you got the wrong people connected in the group. You know, when my pastor was living, she put me uh, in charge of outreach. She saw that in my spirit because I, I love being out. I love, you know, seeing people smile, you know, just doing the little things, you know. Uh, load. I went to Sam's and load the the, the, the church van up with, with cases of water and took them around to the old older uh, people that you know didn't have you know as much just to make sure that they was hydrated and people that didn't have water on the streets going by putting bottle putting you know bottles in, in uh, 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 plastic bags and giving it to people on the street you're doing a hot month and, and just just a little the little stuff like that right there you know she knew uh that that was in me amen and, she, and therefore she connected more people in outreach that had the same likeness and that thing worked but you put somebody in there that ain't ain't fit for it they complain they don't want to go out to the street it's too hot you see what i'm saying they, i didn't i didn't bother with the heat worry about getting up and down i didn't worry about putting all them cases of water in, in there and loading up that van with, with with water and it said uh, it's 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 102 degrees i said i don't want to get this water out today it's too hot no because i was excited to do it i i wanted to do it that's in my spirit because what i was operating in my assignment my purpose amen and, and then so therefore she pulled it out so going back to the leader leaders ought to be able to see people that's in you know that that, that are out of position maybe put them in something else and uh find out what they look at them and really see they work because there's a lot of people that show all kinds. They they show all kinds of discord in the in the organization. People don't even want to work together, and that's true. And there's some people, even some leaders, out of place. You know, because guess what happens? You might have a new a new uh, exciting uh, person that can really preach and teach. Oh man, the church be filled up to the brim. But after a while, you want to know what happened to the people. It used to be you couldn't get a, room, a seat. You couldn't get a room. You couldn't. It was like standing room. But now you can you can you can sit anywhere all over the place. You looking at like what in the world happened? Because there's some things that people uh, fail to realize that when you not walking in your anointing and out of your purpose, and when people start to really see after all of the show gone down, they like, uh, this ain't no better than where I was at, or I should just stayed at home. I shouldn't even came. You know, all this stuff happens. And then you got the people that's in the wrong position running people away too. How you gonna have a greeter that's always uh always got an attitude problem? You see how the, you see how they the greeter and some people have greeters at church. I mean, they the first some before they get into the ushers, they the first people that greeting the welcome the people to holding the door for the people coming from the outside. And you got a, a hateful somebody sitting up there opening the door and always uh uh putting up animosity uh, uh just you can see them with discord ain't nothing ever right they always complaining they always say uh, i don't know why they asked me to do it i ain't gonna do you know always doing it. you got them over there greeting people and you won't know why people uh leave why people don't want to come in the church because you got people uh, ushers if your ushers uh got a face like she's sucking on lemons or he's sucking on lemons they don't need to be a no usher. Usher's are supposed to be a pleasant smile. Supposed to be one that's really humble, humility. The one that love to see people come into the house of the Lord. Don't care who they are. Don't got the norm. Just going to say, good morning, brother. I'm glad you're here this morning. You look well. Amen. That's when the person is in the right place. You don't want to be somebody like, uh, I didn't suppose to usher this, this week. You want my, 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 this won't even my Sunday to usher. And they don't call me the usher. Well, if you don't want to usher, just don't do it because now you don't took your you out of place. Now you don't you you, you setting off vibes, spirits that ain't even good. So that's why being in purpose and being in connection with God and knowing what God's will is and it, it, it's so vital. 
Amen. Because everything uh, with, 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 with rise, when he give you assignment, it's gonna go like it's supposed to go. But when you when you assign yourself, <laughs> when you assign yourself, you, it's, it don't never fit right. I don't care what you do. You got more people spending all their money trying to make it fit when it ain't gonna never fit because one, it, it won't supposed to fit. It, it don't supposed to fit because you 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 operating out of out of order. Basically, <laughs> you in error. <laughs> and you need to get back in uh, the right the right path because uh, you're looking at you know we've been praying for pastors over the over the uh, last few years you know um, there's been some that you know and we each his own we don't know what uh, 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 pressures a man go through in life but really it hurts us to know that uh, a man of God would take his own life or she would take his own uh, her own life I mean really it get that bad to a point that. You know, like I said, we don't know, but to, to take your own life, that's that's really rough right there. That's really a rough thing. And and so, therefore, you know, that should have been somebody. See, again, you got to have right people around you. Somebody should have identified when these people were going to, through, that they, that, that, uh, they should, like their armor bearers or the people that's praying for them. That's why people just can't be in position just because it's a position. No, you got to be true because if they had, if they had people around them that they can really pray something, amen. They should be able to identify the signs that they was their leader were really going through something. But 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 everybody, you know, a lot of places, and I ain't gonna say it's all of them, but a lot of people just for the show. You don't even supposed to be no armor bearer, but you want to be next to the pastor. So because when he stand up, you can stand up. When he go somewhere, you can go somewhere. You know, when they call him here, hey, you come. Smiling and like a grease monkey, you smiling, but you you sitting up there and ain't got no but bit anointing because you over there shacked up, you over there shacked up, and you going to the club, you still going to the cookout, you still uh uh, uh playing cards and gambling with money and and, and, and drinking liquor, and you supposed to be you talk you call yourself being an armor bearer, ain't that something? That's that you know and so that, you know just like I said, Pastor, we, we hitting on it tonight because you know. Uh, the question has been raised, you know, do you do, do you know what your your assignment is from God? And, 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 and you know, if you uh, understand the Bible as a man or woman of God, you know this thing is so serious. It, it's serious. It's serious as death. It's serious as death. You know, when, when we read or when I read, when the Bible says, Woe unto them that, that cause my sheep to stray. That woe is it, it, so uh, you, we don't know what that woe is. That woe, we can't even see what that woe is. We can't even feel. We can't even grasp what that woe is. That woe, we ain't never experienced that woe. Would God give a woe? Uh, 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 when He, he gives something, we we ain't nothing. You know that little that little pain that you went through ain't gonna compare to 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 to, to that woe of what God, that wrath of what God is, will release on you. So yes, I take this thing serious. Ain't ain't playing. You know, ain't got no time to play. Ain't got no time because you know what? It could be my time any day. I could blink out of here any day, and I, and I don't hey, and I don't play around to the point that you know I want to go to hell because I'm over here playing games. You know, there's so many people playing games, Pastor. They supposed to be leaders, even the the ones that maybe not on TV, but the ones that are on TV playing, the ones that are not on TV playing. That that's that's dangerous. That's Russian roulette. That's really dangerous. And so if you know the word of God, and you know, God ain't ain't to be mocked. God, you ain't going to play with God. Amen. So therefore, you know, I take my assignment and what God has for me to do seriously. Amen. You know, so that's what we got to do. Pastor, go ahead. Amen. I, I think it just was a, a good lesson tonight because I think some people really don't see how serious your purpose is and, and when you work on for God, when you get in front of people saying God said and God doing this, when you are representing God, that is a very dangerous thing if you are doing it in a wrong way or you are operating in an area that you were not called to do. Amen. So, you know, I just thought it was a great show tonight, Pastor, and I just hope everybody got something out of it. Amen. Amen. Amen, Pastor. And I, and I enjoyed the, the conversation tonight on the purpose. And this is our, our, this is what we do on Men to Men Talk Back. We want to help you. We, you know, if we didn't care about people, and, and we wouldn't even do what we do. <laughs> you know, if we, if we, if it was all about us, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't follow the assignment of God because we would want to be put on a pedestal. It, we, we would have uh, uh, motive. 
and we ain't got no motive but to see you grow, prosper, and be blessed by the Lord. I'm going to give me 20 seconds, amen, and I'm going to, I want to just give you a few key, key things real quickly. I'm, I'm just going to give you a, a few, uh, a few key things real quickly. Number one, for those that are listening and you're not sure of your purpose, key number one, walk with God. Because as we walk with him, he will start what? Revealing his plan to you and to, to us. When we walk with God, he will start revealing his plan to us. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to, uh, unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he, God, him, he shall direct thy path. Amen. Number two, surrender your will to God's. Amen. Not what you want to do in life, but what is God's will for me to do in life? Surrender your will to God's. Amen. God, what do you have me to do? What do you need me to do? What do you need me to say? How do you need me to go about it? Amen. This is what surrender. In order for this to happen, we have to do what pastors already said it. Be committed. Amen. We got to be committed. God won't overload you. Amen. He will not overload us. But he will do what? Slowly show you things or show us things as we grow. Amen. He don't he don't overload us at one time, give us a whole bunch of stuff. He first he got to see if we're gonna be really committed to do it. And and, and that's why I'm not I'm not ashamed of starting ministry from the ground up. Some people say, mm. but you know what, Pastor? The small churches should not be ashamed because God do not despise small beginnings. Amen. But he sometimes want to see when it ain't nobody, are you still going to be committed? When you ain't got but one or two, are you still going to be committed? If you got 200, amen, it's easy to be committed. When people don't show up, it, 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 it's easy to say, you know what? I'm not going to pray since ain't nobody showed up. No, you can get down on your knees if you got to pray by yourself. That's being committed. Amen. Not just saying, you know what, ain't nobody show up for prayer, so I guess I'll just go ahead and go home. No, I'm going to get down on my knees. I've done that plenty of times. Amen. When we was doing Bible, Tuesday night Bible study, we had prayer first and then Bible study. Amen. Sometimes we have visitors come in, man, and we go into a prayer. Amen. And I'm telling you, breakthrough, you see it. But then, you know, sometimes I was there by myself at 630. And I, I could have just said, you know what, I ain't going to go into uh, 7 o'clock because don't nobody come to prayer, uh, prayer meeting. A prayer service, no matter come to the prayer hour. So I'm just gonna leave. No, you got to pray by yourself. That's being committed. Amen. So, so another thing, Romans 12 and 1. It says, "I beseech you, you, uh, uh, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself body, by your present, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed." Amen. Verse 2, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The will of God. Amen. The will of God. And if we are to know our purpose in life, we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Number three, we have to listen to, uh, to God's spirit. Amen. We have to listen to God's spirit. John 10 and 20, uh, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they do what? Follow me. These are just a few things that will help you, amen, to begin to know what your purpose is, amen, from God. And that's having to commit, being committed, having a relationship, and being uh, doing the will of the Father. Okay, now, any callers tonight, real quickly, any callers tonight, uh, that would like to make comments, amen, you could do so at this time. Any callers on the line that would like to make a, have a comment or a thought they would like to share tonight, I just want to remind everybody I, at the end of the conversation, we do allow uh, people to, t uh, to, to share their thoughts and comments, amen. This is uh, Deacon South, but I'm not, uh, I don't really have anything to say. You guys hit on like every every week you do. Um, I'm so blessed to be able to be a part of this program. 
uh, even if I'm just a listening ear, um, I learn a lot and prosper from this program as well as my services on Sunday. So I'm, I'm happy for that. But I want to I wanna just uh, tell you guys to keep on pushing and more and more people will start uh, getting it. You know, I want to say getting it because a lot of people still don't get it. A lot of people still don't understand that, you know, we're in the time of Jesus and, and, and uh, the coming of Jesus again, and, and people just need to start getting it, even church people, and you guys hit up right on the mark tonight. Hey, man, Deacon, I, I tell you, you know, as I, you know, listen to you make comments, sometimes I know you said you don't when you do. You know, I find you one of what we're talking about tonight, being committed. Your purpose is being supportive of the man of God. And, you know, also you're learning, you know, and that's, 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 I tell you, you know, commitment is a big thing. And, and, and I pray that the body of Christ will get back committed, you know, uh, back to being committed to doing the will of the Lord. Um, I have listeners, they've been commenting on the um, broadcast uh, I have a couple that that's been listening in and made their comments on the on the uh, on the um, the broadcast chat room. So we thank God for all of those listeners. And and again, I, we do post this on Facebook. But if you're not our friend on Facebook, you can write this number down to call in on the next time we do the men to men talk back. The number is eight five seven two three two zero one five seven. And the PIN number is 271855. And so again, we thank God for all of you that continue to listen in at this broadcast. And uh, we asked Pastor Carl if he had anything he would like to add to it. Amen. Just, just always a blessing, amen, to be able just to do the work for the Lord and operate in my purpose. Amen. Amen. You know, when you when you operate in the purpose, like you said, you, you start seeing the, the blessings. You know, you see all those things that God, you know, uh rewards us. It, you know, we ain't I'm no I'm I'm speaking for myself and I, I think I can speak for Pastor that what he does, he he not doing it to, to look for reward. But we know that because we are obedient, his word don't lie, he's gonna bless us. And blessings come from all different things, you know, all forms. Amen. Blessings come. Could be doors, could be monetary, could be finances, could be, you know, good health, could be the blessings of covering over your children, could be everything, everything. So, so you know, I thank God for this and being in, our, actually being in our purpose, being in my purpose, you know, uh, doing this radio broadcast for five years is being in purpose. And I was thinking about this and I'm going to let us let you go and we're going to continue to broadcast. Uh, some years ago when I was in college, I didn't know really what I wanted to take in uh, college when I was in high school. I just looking at how much money I wanted to make. <laughs> so I chose something with a whole bunch of money instead of getting in my purpose. You know, really didn't have really didn't have a counselor that could pull out purpose. You know, and, and the purpose of ministry and the purpose uh just being in the regular uh your regular life, it, it counts too. Because see, you know, but going back to me, I chose to do uh physical therapy. I said physical therapy making a hundred some thousand dollars in the early nineties. You're looking at about early nineties. I'm talking about real early nineties. Like ninety two, ninety three, man, a hundred thousand dollars with good money, boy. I said, man, I want that's what I want to do. I went to college, man, signed up for uh physical therapy, didn't realize all that chemistry and stuff, man. I won't love I didn't like biology, none of that stuff. And and end up changing my major. And then changed my major to another major because I was running out of time and didn't realize that I should have took mass communication in college because I love TV and radio. I could, you know, but hey, I didn't know my purpose. So hey, therefore, not only spiritual, but it works in a, in, a, in a sense of high school students need to know what their purpose is so in life. Because there are some people, hey amen, that, 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 that their purpose is to, to run a funeral home, to, to take care of the dead. Amen. That's their purpose. My purpose and talents in the world is, is God giving me to cut hair, you know, and, and, and to cook. You know, some people can't cook. So we got ta we got to know uh, different talents and purpose. But anyway, we thank and praise God for you. I, I'm talk, I can talk to death. That's why I, I know the Lord <laughs> had me to do radio because you got to talk to do radio. Amen. Pastor Carl, I want to say God bless you, man. I pray the blessing of the Lord over you and your family. Amen. And I thank you for just taking the time out every week to be co-host of this show. And, and it's going to continue to grow. Amen. We just got to continue to push it and continue to let people know 
uh, that we are here every week at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So thank you, Pastor Carl. Thank you, callers. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Those that are on the broadcast, we're going to continue, and uh, we'll be right back with more. So I want you to stay tuned. Amen.
against the key No one can No one will Oh Oh Victory belongs to Jesus Victory belongs to him Oh
victory belong to him amen we want to thank uh, each and every listener that tuned in tonight for the tim a radio broadcast men to men talk back the talk up show every wednesday night nine o'clock p.m eastern standard time and we give god the glory we thank god for another wonderful conversation tonight on purpose Amen. If you missed the first part of this broadcast, you just tuned in, listening in. Once I finish this live broadcast, you can go to the playback and listen at the beginning of our conversation. We want to bring to you tonight the weather forecast for the week real quickly. Tonight, we're looking at a low of 66 degrees with thunderstorm in the forecast. On Thursday, 90% chance of rain, thunderstorm. High of 78 with a low of 67. Friday, thunderstorm. High of 78 with a low of 66. Saturday, more thunderstorm. High of 77 with a low of 68. Sunday, scattered showers. Amen. High of 81 degrees with a low of 67. Monday, cloudy skies. High of 84 with a low of 67. Tuesday, high of 84 degrees with a low of 65. Scattered showers. Wednesday, isolated storms. With a low, with a high of 83, with a low of 64, 30% chance of thunderstorm and rain. That's your seven-day forecast. Uh, real quickly, we give God the glory and the honor. We do welcome you to join us on Sunday at 8:45 at Healingwood Ministries, and we're located 501 North Main Street, Lewisburg, North Carolina, right inside of the beautiful chapel on Lewisburg College campus. We welcome each and every one. Amen. I, the doors swing open on welcome hinges. Amen. You and we want to treat you like it's somebody. Amen. And so we want to love on you. So if you don't have a place to go worship, you don't have a place to call home. Hey, our doors are open for you. We don't have no 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 special way. We just be led by the Spirit of God and to dare to tell you what thus said the Lord to pray with you. Amen. And pray for you and just to see change come in your life. Who wouldn't want to see change in their brother's life? I want to see change in brothers and sisters' lives. I want to see them come up. I want to see them change. I want to see them set set free from drugs and alcohol. I want to see them set free of these things. I want to see them from uh, poverty to come up. Amen. You know, I want their mind to say, "Yeah, I can have better. I, I want. I, I I can have some steak, but I can buy a cow if I want to." Yeah, amen. You know, it's good to have a piece of steak, but, but if I want to go buy a cow, I can say, you know what, I can go buy a cow. <laughs> amen. So, you know, I want to see you do well. And that's what this ministry is about. Amen. So we thank God for all of you that tune in tonight again. Meet us here on tomorrow night between 8 and 9 p.m. for Thursday night, which is the last night of the week. And so until we get more people to come in and uh, want to be part of this broadcast and, and share their message to, to the listeners, uh, we're going to keep it as Sunday through Thursday. We have the whole week. We got Friday, Saturday uh, open for whoever that would love to become a part of this radio broadcast. Those spots are open to preach your word or to the word that God give you or to teach the word that God give you. Amen. So, again, if you would like to be a, a, a part of this show, have your own show, you can email me at pastoracrits2016 at gmail.com and, and I'll hook you up. At, at very low low cost, and not you know have to pay no thirty or forty dollars a month. You know all the music and the, uh, everything is done already here to show. It, it, it's so it's easy as one two three. <laughs> it's easy as one two three. Just reach out to me, and and as we take off, you take off with me if you can stay connected. Amen. We thank God again for just what He's done over this uh, show time tonight. We pray the blessings of God on your life. If there's someone that's not saved, you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, as your Lord, amen, you can now. You know, tomorrow's not promised. Tomorrow's not, the next minute or second is not promised. All you have to do is say, Father, here I am. I, I hear about you. I want to know more about you. Lord, I, I, I ask that you place your spirit in me. Lord, here I am. I believe that your son died and I believe that he rose from the dead. I believe that he can do all things. I believe that he, he did die for my sins. And I believe that you raised him from the dead. I, I do believe that. If you believe. You got to be a believer. If you believe it. Amen. The Bible says you can be saved. Any, anyone that believes on the name Jesus Christ can be saved. Amen. It's not too late for you. 
All you have to do is say, be, is, is submit yourself to Him. Be submissive, Amen, to Him, and be submissive to His will, Amen. And, and, and you know, it's a, it's a wonderful thing, you know, when 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 we think about those fountains of water that He will give you living water, Amen. I will never go hungry and I will never go thirsty because I know I trust in Him and I know He's gonna watch out for me because I put my trust that He's gonna look out for me like I look out for my children, Amen. You know that hey, you know we we we'll be in prayer for uh, right now for the um, families of the lost loved ones. Um, you know, a friend of mine, brother Long, Travis Long, just passed here a uh, couple of days ago. I was at the wait tonight, and his mother there on his on the walker, and their their father died many 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 years ago when they was very small uh growing up and it had been just the mother and the, the son and the sister and so talking with the sister today she was like you know it's just me and mama now you know you know she you know her big brother was her rock her, her everything so you're looking at my brother was uh just on facebook uh I think it was like 12 hours in a conversation about the teachers and within hours he he were gone so if you have not accepted Jesus Christ I, I, I pray that you that you seek him right now I, I pray that you seek him while you are uh, alive and while you're in a right mind while you're able to have understanding I pray that you will seek him and let him enter into your life because if when you do you'll never be the same I'm telling you right now when I yielded and I gave up the world to follow Christ and to follow God's will, man, that's 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 an unexplainable joy. That's an unexplainable thing. Yeah, I mean, you it's the feeling that, wow. I mean, it's an unbelievable feeling. You know, it's similar to like those that had a, their babies for the first time. So excited you got some child, your, your new child just in it into the world and God and bless you and you just can't you just so overjoyed of a healthy baby that God has blessed you with you know that that times a hundred <laughs> infinity amen the joy that he'll give you is infinity joy mm, yes somebody say infinity joy infinity joy hallelujah it has no end of the joy that he gives you infinity times infinity <laughs> mm, there's no end of the joy that he gives you amen even when you going through you can still find peace because you can pray to him and he'll give you comfort and, and, and that thing you know you ain't thinking about that thing no more that you when you know who he is and you have no doubt we all go through something we all struggle with stuff we all come short on our bills we all we all get fired <laughs> sometimes you know people let us go we don't have to have no reason to let us go some people with companies they they let us go because they got to but guess what? He'll open the door and you make him more money. <laughs> well, you can't beat God, can you? Sure can't. I'm trying to tell you, you were sitting there and you're like, Lord, I done lost my job. You make it $13 hour. I said, mm, I done lost my job. I don't know what in the world I'm going to do. And then you begin to say, you know what? I'm going to pray about that thing. I ain't going to worry about that thing. And that thing, you know, you don't fill out application. Now they want to pay you $17 an hour. <laughs> you can't beat it. Oh, you can't beat God. Hallelujah. We praise him on the night. Amen. We thank you again for tuning in. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And enjoy the rest of your evening. And we'll see you on tomorrow between 8 and 9 p.m. for Thursday night music mix on the Timmy Radio Broadcast. Can't be ashamed. Yeah. I live that Christian lifestyle. I can't wait a while. I got to live it right now. Covered in the blood of Jesus, gonna wipe me down. I'm too fresh, gonna wipe me down. I live like a disciple now. Everlasting high, got me saying Jesus loud. Because the enemy trying to wipe us out. Blood of Jesus gotta clean us now. Glory us, so match lust. It's the Lord, He attached to us. We can't fully understand His love. For this world, it's like he gave it up. The face of Father God, he make it up. Made in his image on that mountain, he was blowing up. 
Transfigurated, James and John was stuck. Peter spoke by tabernacles, yup. Had fallen me, suffice eternal life. My life is not my own, cause I'm a living sacrifice. Superman, but ain't no crib tonight. Invincible with Jesus' blood, I can sense the light. Light of the world, disorder of the world. Can't lose the safe, I preach the gospel with a flame, yup. Avoiding fame, cause I was made from dust. Born in the spirit, kill the flesh, what's up? I live that Christian lifestyle. I can't wait a while, I gotta live it right now. Covered in the blood of Jesus, gonna wipe me down. I'm too fresh, gonna wipe me down. I live like a disciple now. Everlasting high, got me saying Jesus loud. Because the enemy trying to wipe us out. Blood of Jesus gotta clean us now. Philippians 1 and 6, I'm confident in the Lord, forget the pants. Not confident, cause I got sense. I thank the Lord for common sense. Yeah, that president say why I'm motivated. Righteous indignation, mammon got us walking faithless. Doubt and worryation, loss of patience. Robbers of our faith, we feel forsaken. But we can't feel forsaken nor naked Jesus said he never leave us nor forsake us Eyes closed, we gotta awaken I got the trumpet plus I got a cadence The word of God, they tryna erase it Put the Bibles back in school, I rebuke Satan Knowledge applied to God, you make it strides On eagle's wings, let's take a ride, yeah I live that Christian lifestyle I can't wait a while, I gotta live it right now Covered in the blood of Jesus, gonna wipe me down I'm too fresh, gonna wipe me down I live like a disciple now Everlasting high, got me saying Jesus loud Because the enemy trying to wipe us out Blood of Jesus gotta clean us now I live that Christian lifestyle I can't wait a while, I gotta live it right now Covered in the blood of Jesus, gonna wipe me down. I'm too fresh, gonna wipe me down. I live like a disciple now. Everlasting high, got me saying Jesus loud. Because the enemy trying to wipe us out. Blood of Jesus gotta clean us now.